Hey everybody, Dan again, stocktrades.ca. Welcome back to the channel. And this week we're going to continue right on with our ETF reviews. You can see last week I did a review on SCHD, which I will drop a link in the description below and up at the top of this video. And this week we're going to go back to a Canadian fund one that is pretty underrated, it's not very well known, and it could have gotten you exposure to this huge, huge run-up in AI and semiconductors. And this is primarily due to popular demand because a lot of people are asking about how to get exposure to this industry without necessarily picking an individual stock. Many people might be uncomfortable with the fact that many of these stocks are trading at all-time highs. They don't want to pick a single horse in the race per se they instead want to own the entire industry the global semiconductor industry and for this reason i'm going to be going over horizons chips etf it trades under the ticker chps it has a canadian traded version and a u.s dollar traded version and uh, i'm going to go over Everything you need to know about this fund from its top holdings to its management fees, which are a little bit higher than you would think just based off uh, numbers posted on the website and so much more. So with that being said, let's dive right into the ETF now. So before we start, remember, if you want to join the No BS Stock Trades newsletter, this is an absolutely free newsletter we deliver twice a week to over 25,000 Canadians. They're getting stock research market commentary, case studies, anything you can think of. If you're looking to become a better investor, this newsletter is an absolute must and it doesn't even cost you a penny. If you're looking to go a bit further and want to join Stock Trades Premium, you can check that out on our website. You can see my full portfolio, all of our research, model portfolios, screening tools. We have a private Discord, all that stuff. And finally, if you want to hear more from me, I do the Thursday episodes of the Canadian Investor Podcast, so you can head over there and listen to me and Simone as we go over particularly Canadian stock earnings and market news. So CHIPS, what exactly is CHIPS? Well, it seeks to replicate to the extent possible and net of expenses the performance of an index that is designed to provide exposure to the performance of global publicly listed con companies engaged in the production and development of semiconductors. So it tracks the selective capped global semiconductor index. So although this fund has high fees, it is not an actively managed fund. It is an index fund. So that is one thing that is important to note. The fund does have a pretty high turnover ratio. They're making quite a few trades in the portfolio. And we're going to see this more so in the fee section where you'll realize that the TUR, the trading expense ratio, is, is taking quite a big chunk out of the fees. Now, the net expense ratio of 0.55 on Y charts actually isn't correct. It's higher than this, and I'm going to get to that in a bit. But what you'll notice on this fund is it actually has relatively low assets under management, 68.45 million. Now, this fund started in July 2021, and I have a feeling the AUM might be a little bit on the low side because... When it started out, it, it, it did fairly well until the 2022 bear market. And we all know what happened to tech, uh, particularly companies like NVIDIA, things like that during the uh, 2022 bear market. We can see here at its lowest in October of 2022, it was down over 35%. But since then, it has come roaring back. And in 2023, I mean, over the last year, this fund has gained 71% uh, when we look to three-year returns, even since inception. That would be since inception. It's up around 57%. And I mean, even at the start of 2024, I'm filming this in early March of 2024, depending on when you're watching it, this fund is up, you know, 22% year to date. So this fund has absolutely crushed most all ETFs you can find in Canada. And, you know, we can see that it's got pretty heavy inflows over the last while. I mean, we're looking at Three month inflows of three million or uh, three month inflows of eight point five million. So you're looking at you know a pretty hefty increase even over the last three months as more and more people you know become attracted to AI type investments and semiconductors things like that. 
So this fund is very volatile. Look at the max drawdown, 48.16%. This fund has lost half its value at some point. And it is certainly not for those who are looking for value. It's not for those who are looking for a dividend yield. As we can see, it yields 0.43%. This is for people who are looking to capitalize on the potential total returns of the semiconductor industry. Uh, they're looking to take advantage of AI. Whether or not you think it's a bubble, whether or not you think it's overvalued, that's ultimately not up to me to decide. I'm showing you this ETF. You can make your decisions based on your overall outlook of the industry moving forward. But what I will explain is that this ETF is expensive. It is expensive. If we go down to the overall fundamentals, uh, the weighted average PE ratio of this fund is nearly 30x and the weighted average price to sales ratio is 6.7x. This is very high. When we look at return on assets and return on equity though, these companies inside of this fund are performing exceptionally well. Now, on a forward basis, because of the growth in the industry, it's a little more ex little more attractive, although it is still very expensive. 24.2 uh, forward price to earnings ratio and a 6.1 forward price to sales ratio. This fund is expensive. It is not your typical value ETF. It is not your typical blue chip Canadian income ETF or anything. It is certainly volatile. And when we look at the forecasted five-year earnings growth, the fund is expected, the holdings within it, just under 12% annualized earnings growth. And for the next year, around 12 and a half. Now, some companies are going to grow much faster than this, and some companies are going to grow slower than this. Let's look into the uh, fact sheet for chips, and we can get an idea of the fund's total costs. We can get an idea of its uh, overall holdings and things like that. So this fund trades in Canadian under the ticker CHPS.TO, and it trades in US. So you can buy this fund in US dollars under CHPS.U. So you would select the .U variant, which would give you US dollar uh, currency. So ultimately, if you want to own the Canadian one, it's hedged. And if you want to own the US one, obviously you own it in US dollars. This fund has a management expense ratio of 0.55, which is what I had mentioned here in on Y charts. It's noting 0.55, but it is higher than this. So if we go back to this fact sheet and we head down below, we can find the trading expense ratio. So the management expense ratio 0.55, the TER is 0.18. These are all of the ETF's trading costs. So, you know, with a, a fund with a high turnover rate is going to have a higher trading expense ratio. So you're coming in at total ETF expenses of 0.73%. This is not a cheap ETF. The fees are relatively high. However, this is more of a niche ETF. You're going to get higher fees on these smaller based ETFs. Um, I can think of other, you know, kind of niche style ETFs like a REIT ETF that would have higher fees, particularly, be, particularly because it owns less holdings. It's, you know, targeted, hyper-targeted to a specific industry. So they can often charge more than like an all-in-one fund. However, Another reason why the fund is probably quite high in fees is it has a low AUM. Generally, the higher AUM goes, the less you can charge and still run the fund profitably. The fund pays a distribution annually. It's not very much. You're not buying this fund for its distribution. So in terms of top holdings, I'm not going to use this fact sheet because it's June 30th, 2023. And I'm also not going to use Y charts because they have the top holdings as of end of January. The best place to get their top holdings are on the site directly. Now, this is updated as of March 1st, 2024. I'm filming this maybe three days later. So as you can see, there is heavy exposure to NVIDIA and Broadcom. Now, these two ETFs have absolutely skyrocketed in value as of late. I mean, NVIDIA is just absolutely bonkers. Broadcom, not as much. It's, it's more of a tinier, you know, more dividend growth, blue chip play but it still has increased in value quite a bit. And then you look to Taiwan Semiconductor, ASML Holdings, AMD. Then there's kind of a drop off in terms of weighting. You get to Intel, Qualcomm, uh, Applied Materials, Texas Instruments. 
This fund is very heavily exposed to the major semiconductor players, which is not all that surprising. But when we look to the weightings here, we're looking at, you know, 20.5, 30.5, let's go 41%. Almost half of the fund is weighted to five holdings. And you could argue that these five holdings probably have the largest influence on the semiconductor industry in the world moving forward. So this could either be a benefit to you if you're looking for exposure more so to those heavier plays, or it could be a detriment if you believe that those five companies are maybe a bit too overvalued right now. But there is some concentration risk here, and that's certainly something you need to take note of. So the last thing we'll go over here, because we've actually got the gist of it. It's a very, very simple fund is we're going to go over the allocations, particularly geographically. So if we head back to Y charts here and we hit to allocations, we can see that this is an all stock fund. Obviously there's, there's not very many holdings in it. it. It's quite limited in its holdings and it's also just an all equity ETF. If we head down to geographical exposure, you can see that it has around 64% exposure to North America. It has practically no exposure to Canada, actually absolutely no exposure to Canada, which is not all that surprising. We don't have any major semiconductor players here, 64% to the USA. And then we look to developed countries in Europe. It has around 11.6% exposure to the Netherlands. And then when we come to the developed Asia markets, 12.8% exposure to Taiwan, which is not really all that surprising. It holds Taiwan semiconductors. So it is a pure play technology ETF. This is absolutely tech, 98.91%. I don't know where the other is. It says basic materials. But overall, you're buying this if you want exposure to semiconductor tech companies. And in terms of the actual blend, this is a large cap fund. There is not very many small cap companies in this ETF. In fact, I would say at 0.42%, there's practically none. There's a few mid cap companies, but overall, this is going to give you exposure to the giants of the semiconductor world globally. This isn't just in the United States. It is global. So that's pretty much it for this ETF. I'm not sure what more I can say. It is a one-click option for those who don't really want to invest in a single semiconductor company, particularly because they're possibly a little bit overvalued right now, but you still want exposure to the industry over the long term. So you're maybe looking to buy the whole sector instead of an individual stock. The fees are pretty reasonable for what it offers. As I mentioned, a lot of the niche ETFs, particularly in Canada, these fund managers don't have the AUM that they could get, say, in the United States to charge lower fees. So as a result, they have to charge a higher management fee, but to be honest, 0.73%, although it is high, it's not that bad considering what it gives you exposure to. It probably would be very difficult to replicate this portfolio on your own. Now, if we're looking for an alternative, there is plenty of semiconductor ETFs that trade in the United States. I mean, one of them would be SOX, S-O-X-X, the iShare semiconductor ETF. We can see it's absolutely massive relative to uh, chips at 12.83 billion in AUM. The fees are a little bit lower. I'm not going to dive into the trading ratio. It, it's probably a bit higher than this, but ultimately it's, it's lower fees and they could probably charge this lower fee just because of that massive AUM. So in terms of holdings, it's much the same. Uh, it has a little bit higher exposure to AMD, um, a little less exposure to Broadcom and Taiwan Semiconductor, and it's also very limited. It only contains around 35 stocks, but this is also more of a North American play than a global play. I don't want to ramble on too much about alternatives, but there's plenty of semiconductor ETFs that you can find that will provide you uh, exposure. If you're looking to pay less fees uh, south of the border, that you could potentially look at. Make sure you understand the exposures of these ETFs in relation to whether they're North American, whether they're global, things like that. CHIPS is a global ETF. It has less exposure to North America, more exposure to the global markets, whereas something like SOX is more North American focused. That said, everybody, Watch yourself investing in this sector. It's very, very expensive right now. There is a lot of hype. There's also a lot of growth. 
Whether or not these stocks are priced to perfection, that is ultimately not for me to decide. The one thing I will say is these funds should be reserved for those who have a high tolerance for risk. These could very well draw down 40 plus percent again, and you don't want to be left hanging onto this fund. If you're not comfortable with that, you'll end up panic selling, you'll end up doing a whole bunch of suboptimal things ultimately for your portfolio. But again, if you liked the video, smash that like button, head down below, subscribe to the channel. Very important so that we can continue to provide these ETF videos. No BS newsletter is in the description. It's absolutely free. It's a no brainer to sign up for. You'll get two emails a week from me highlighting a ton of commentary that's going to make you a better investor. And as always, Thursday shows on the Investor Podcast, you can catch me with Simone as we're talking Canadian stock earnings and market news. So we'll see you next time.